Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be a little bit about me. I'm going to talk a little bit about my background, where I've been, where I'm from, basically what it's like being a mixed race person and the different experiences I've had in the different countries that I've been to. So if you're interested in finding out a little bit more about me, stay tuned. Hi guys, Thelma here and welcome back and I just want to say thank you to all my new subscribers. I really appreciate the love and clicking on and supporting me. I really appreciate it. Well, today is going to be a video, just a little bit more personal information about me and I really wanted to share this because I, you know, I went on YouTube, I had a look around, you know, just to see if there's anyone else out there talking about being black and being Irish, being mixed race. And I have to honestly say, I didn't see one post talking about being black and Irish specifically. I really thought that, you know, it would be really helpful to anybody out there who is black and Irish or is just mixed race out there to hear my story. In this video, I'm just going to talk about where I'm from, a little bit about the experiences that I had growing up in Ireland. Watch out for more videos where I will be discussing my different experiences living in different countries with different people, different nationalities, and of course, how I feel about living here in America. So in order for me to keep this video short, I have formulated some questions that I will answer for you today. So my first question is, what is your ethnic background? Well, my ethnic background is that I am half white Irish and I am half black Nigerian. That's my, my ethnic background. What is your nationality is the next question. My nationality is Irish. I'm an Irish citizen. I was born in Ireland and I have an Irish passport. A lot of people do actually confuse nationality with ethnicity. Um, ethnicity is, as I said, your parentage, what you're made up of racially, black, white, white you know, Asian, all of that. That's your ethnicity. Um, not everybody's ethnicity is the same as their nationality. My nationality is Irish. Irish people are generally seen as white people and uh, my nationality is Irish and I have an Irish passport. Who are your parents and where did they meet? Okay, well, my mom, her name's Betty, and she's white and she's Irish. And she was she's from Dublin in Ireland. And back in the 70s, I'm giving away my age now, she was um she was a secretary in an insurance company. And my dad, Edward, who has passed away the last few years, he was a student from Nigeria and he was actually studying in um, Dublin to become an aeronautical engineer and he met my mom. I think he met her at a club. <laughs> what was it like living in Ireland as a black person? Wow, this is such a difficult question for me to answer. Um, I don't want to offend anybody because the people that I love out there, you know, my Irish brothers and sisters and all of my Irish friends out there, if you're my friends and you're my family, you know, guys, that I love you and it doesn't matter what colour you are. But my experiences in Ireland growing up as a black person were not positive. It was very unusual for me you know for somebody to be black and irish and i actually found that you know growing up in ireland it was very hard for people to really allow me to define myself as an irish person even though i was brought up 
in the, you know, with the Catholic nuns and all the stereotypes you can think of. I was an Irish girl in an Irish school with an Irish mum. My mum and dad didn't stay together, so I was actually raised with my mum and her mum and dad, my granny, granny and granddad, um, raised me. So being brought up in Ireland as a black person was very difficult. It made me feel very isolated and it made it hard for me to be able to um, discover my own identity or define my own identity. Did you ever experience racism in Ireland and what was your first experience? Yes, I did experience racism in Ireland, I have to say. Um, my very first experience, um, it's quite a difficult one to talk about, but my very first experience was when I was about, about my daughter's age, say about three or four, and I remember you know, playing with the little kids on the street before this and just being, you know, a very popular kid, you know, hanging out with my little friends, you know, on our street. But I remember one day, I don't know, you know, how somebody just realised that I was different, coloured, that we used to call people like me back then. I remember one day, um, a whole group of kids, it must have been about 20 kids, um, got together in a group and kind of stood in front of my mum's house and all ganged up on me in front of my mum's house and started to chant slur, you know, racial slurs at me. And I remember being, I even remember my little feet and my white socks. These are the little flashbacks that I have, um, hiding and, you know, not understanding why people were calling me nigger and you know ape and all of these horrible words that I'd never heard of before I didn't understand it and uh, that was my first experience of racism in Ireland my very first memory of racism I continued living in that same house until I left um, when I was about 19 I think I left to travel abroad but I remember um, after that um, having to endure uh, racist uh, chants um, every day of the week. Um, I remember looking out my window and uh, always checking the corners of you know my street to see which end of the boys usually were standing um, so that if I wanted to go out, I would always go in the opposite direction to keep away from them. Um, I always remember, you know, walking out and always being the target. Um, if they were playing football, they would kick it at my head. Um, and, uh, you know, I did actually make a few female friends. Um, and the one thing that actually did actually scar me a lot was the fact that I did have one friend who was I saw as my best friend. And um, there was, a new thing started to happen every evening. Um, all of the kids, you know, would circle around me and each one would take a turn to uh, call me a name. Um, they they try and be creative and it, it was like a big joke. It was like the thing they did before they'd go in, you know, go back go back into into their houses. And my best friend, I was hoping that she wouldn't take a turn, but because of peer pressure, she took a turn <laughs> and she called me a name. And uh, that was the day that I lost my trust in people. And to this, to this day, it's actually affected me making friendships. I did make friends and one of my, my very, very best friend, Audrey, and she's out there still, um, still friends to this day. She was a girl who had her own set of problems and I won't go into too many details about that, but she had her own problems um, that made her stand out as well. So we kind of clung together, me and Audrey, and still stuck together to this day, even though she lives in the UK but still together to this day, 
uh, 40 years later and um, an uncanny amount of different things have happened in our lives but she was white and there were no other black people around me when I was growing up so we kind of stuck together but I had very select few friends um, when I was growing up in Ireland. So the next question is, why did you leave Ireland? And how do you feel how did you feel about Ireland? Well, to be honest with you, the reason why I left Ireland was that I found, as I said at the start of the video, I found it very hard to be able to be allowed to define myself as an Irish person. Now, I know that I can define myself, you know, however I like, and that's all me, that's something that I can do, and I don't need permission from other people. But it was always very difficult for me to be constantly, constantly questioned, where are you from, where are you from, and people saying to me, you know, oh, you're not Irish, you know, where are you from, and for me to constantly have to have that pushback all the time and I think living in Ireland um the the Irish you know that were you know pushing back and saying to me you know you're not Irish I think that they were very um precious about what they thought Irish looked like and I think they were quite offended that I would even you know dare or have the audacity to say that I was an Irish person too um, I don't know, I, I imagine that is racist because maybe if I had have been half, I don't know, half Spanish and half Irish or half Scottish and half Irish, they may have allowed me to just say I was Irish if I looked more white, but I obviously didn't look like them, so they just saw me as this, you know, interesting foreigner um, that kind of needed to be feared a little bit and, you know, kind of treated me with a little bit of suspicion um the reason why, yeah so the reason why i left really was because i wanted to go to a different country where it was far more uh, cosmopolitan where there were more you know different types of people and where i didn't stand out and where i could define myself comfortably um as an Irish person or whoever, you know, whatever I wanted to define myself as. So I really felt I had to leave the country in order to, to do that. How do you feel about the Irish today? Um, well, to be honest with you, obviously I am half Irish. I am Irish, I have an Irish um, nationality. I was brought up in the Irish culture. I have the Irish accent, of course. Um, how I feel about the Irish myself, I did have a lot of anger when I left. Um, I felt like I wanted to distance myself from my Irishness. Um, but, you know, going to a different country and having a very strong accent, you're constantly, you know, complimented on your accent and people are always asking you about Ireland. And I think over time, I started to heal um, when it came to my um, anger and sadness and hurt feelings about, you know, the way the Irish treated me. Um, it, the one thing I will say is that if I didn't have this background, um, I may not really understand, you know, how important it is to treat everybody as individuals. Um, how important it is not to put your culture, your race, or anything like that above another person's humanity, another person's value, okay? And I think that if I didn't have this background of being a mixed race person who did suffer racism, I would find it harder to really empathize with people of different cultures and I feel thankful that I I feel lucky as well that I have I'm in a situation where I can you know experience um different people and not feel like I have to stay within one box or another box um it's actually made me 
um, as, as the type of person who, you know, I really want to get to know your culture. I am very interested in, um, you know, things I don't understand myself. The things, the thing in your culture that I don't understand, I am known, I am intrigued. You know, I am intrigued. I want to know more about you. So when I go to diff these different countries that I've lived in, I'm also always so very, very much intrigued by the culture and the people. And it makes it hard for me to really understand fear of the other, which is something that I'm noticing a lot in, you know, the people that live around me. I've always been the opposite. I've always been extremely interested in that other person that isn't like me or who, you know, doesn't have the same culture as me. So I think, you know, being for me, being a mixed race person has left me so, you know, that I, I can't be racist for me. You know, I know there are people out there with totally different perspective than this, but for me, I, I can't be racist. I, I can't justify it. I don't want it in my life. And I don't un really understand what, why people are racist. I really don't understand it. So guys, if you hung on till the end, I really appreciate it. Um, I hope this um, was interesting to you and I really would love if it was to open up a discussion. So, you know, feel free to comment below and, you know, I will answer every question, you know, that you ask me. This video is the first video that I will be doing, just talking about, you know, my experiences um, and my opinions and, you know, my experiences, you know, as a mixed race woman um, who's Irish and Nigerian specifically living in different countries and how I was received and, you know, my take on that. Um, my next video that I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about my experiences when I lived in Amsterdam. So I actually lived in Amsterdam for seven years. So if you're interested in, you know, more about my travels and my life, please come back and see me again. Okay, so guys, thanks so much. And like, subscribe and all that jazz, as I always say. And uh, thank you so much and take care. Bye.